Hey, good morning. It's uh, Wednesday, February 17th. Thanks so much for being here today. I'm going to continue talking about people. Children are people. Seven-year-olds are people. And you might think, well, wait a minute, Jay. Uh, tell me something I don't know. But it's one of those obvious things that we know, but we don't listen to. We don't get the impact of it. Instead of music this morning, I've got the music of, I hope you can hear some birds in the background, the sounds of the river, and just the beautiful sunrise that's happening, and the river's calm. Later on, they will be choppy and windy. It's just the perfect time to uh, get my video in. And just to look and gaze at the beauty and wonder of God. And it, it is mind-blowing. So thankful. So blessed that God has done these kinds of things for us. We have gray days that remind us of the heaviness of life. Then we have these kinds of days that remind us that God's light is our hope. Children are people. What is the impact of that? What does that mean? Psalm 8 says this, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. Praise to the most intellectually amazing thing in the universe comes from children and infants. Because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. In other words, praise is coming from even the little ones because it brings honor to God and silences his enemies. Then David says, when I consider the work of your hands, of the heavens, the work of your fingers, the artistry that's moving these clouds and setting the scene behind me this morning, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man, what is humanity, that you are mindful of him, the son of man, that you care for him? You have made him, you have made people, a little lower than the heavenly beings, the angels, and crowned him, crowned people, men, women, children, with glory and honor. Even infants you have crowned with glory and honor. What does that mean for us? If we want to do well as a family, as a church, as a country, as a culture, we have to treat people the way that God says they should be treated. Let me give you an example. Let's say that someone in the government educational community has decided we need help with marriage. And so they've got together, did this enormous study and figured out, well, 40 years old is the time to teach people about marriage. I don't know why they came up with that, but that's what they decided. So they gather 40-year-olds in groups all around the country and put them together in rooms with someone to teach them who doesn't know them about marriage, regardless of the background, regardless of the situation this person is in, is in life, whether they've been married or not, whether they're going to be married, whether they don't want to be married, whether they have children or not have children, whether their marriages have been successful or not successful, they're all put together in one group, taught by someone who knows nothing about them personally, and all they have is this academic understanding of marriage. And you're required to go there. If you're 40, you have to go. It's a rite of passage. When you turn 40 years old, we have a compulsory law that you must attend this state-sanctioned class on marriage or there'll be difficulties. You will be deemed to be in contempt. How would that, how would that work? Oh, I can hear the reactions. Wait a minute, we're people. You can't do that to us. You can't ignore my life experience and tell me how to be married when you don't even know me. You're reading from a book or something and people say that they've studied but they don't know what my life is like. And what do they mean by marriage? 
I think you see where I'm going with this. We do that same thing to seven-year-olds and 15-year-olds and three-year-olds and 20-year-olds. <laughs> Osprey in the background, just love it. Um, and we tell them they have to come together in these groups in order to learn what they need to learn about life without any concern for who they are, what their story is, what their background is. How do you think my uh, marriage scenario is going to work out? You think it's going to help marriage? No, it won't help marriage. How is our system of grouping people, young people, but people who are magnificently and wonderfully made and crowned with God by glory and honor and with glory, honor and dignity, women who are special, not non-binary, special, beautiful creatures made by God for particular purposes, men made for particular purposes. Children, crowned with splendor by God to be treated with awe and respect, to be blown away with. We need to be blown away by our kids. But we herd them together in groups without any understanding of who they are and where they are and teach them something that somebody decides they need to know. And we leave God totally out of the picture. What you have from that is people who don't know the holiness of God. They can't grasp the difference between good and evil because there is no good and evil except what this classroom setting says. How's that working out for us? How are our kids doing? Do we have a confident society? Are we people who are sure of purpose life and who love well, live well? Relate well, marry well, know well. Uh uh. Our seven year olds, we've got to start treating them as people made in the image of God, crowned with glory and honor, and to be loved and respected. And work through the areas where they need help, because they need help. We have this sin problem. But the way to do it is not to hurt them together and teach them as a group, but to have enough dignity and concern for them, enough concern for their dignity and for the dignity of the Creator to teach them, to love them, to nourish them in a way that brings honor to God and then ultimately honor to people, even seven-year-olds. And that's the thought for this morning. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, scene. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. So uh, again, thanks for being here. Check us out every day, talk247.com. If you haven't just subscribed, turn on post notifications, the videos will come right to you. And again, just thanks so much for being here. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.